Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's episode, we're going to be doing a follow-up to the miniature Panasonic Toughbook video, which you can go check out up in the cards if you missed it. I'm actually recording this video on the same day that that video went live because I'm already seeing a lot of comments come in from some of you guys uh, of some things we can do to get this machine up and running. Now if you missed that video, to give you the gist of it, we were able to get this machine to turn on, but we got to a screen that looked like this where it was asking us to put in a floppy disk into the floppy disk drive now the problem is this machine does not have an internal floppy disk drive and i don't have the external one that plugs into this port right here on the back and this is that port replicator once again that is a uh, separate piece but i've got it attached to the laptop right now i initially thought that it was asking for a boot disk or a startup disk but a lot of you guys pointed out that that is from the bios on this computer now if you notice i didn't mention it because I didn't really think too much of it in the last video, but this machine has an IBM BIOS on it. For this BIOS to even get on this computer in the first place, it would have had to have been licensed from IBM. And some of you guys pointed out that that screen displays on IBM systems when there is no operating system on the hard drive. And for whatever reason, I didn't even think of that, but that makes total sense. And today we're going to be installing an operating system on this hard drive because my guess is it's blank and there's nothing on it. Now we can't do that on the last laptop itself because we have no way of connecting the installation media, whether that be floppy disks or a CD. And I already confirmed that this machine cannot boot off of a USB floppy drive, so that option is out as well. So the only option we have left, unless I want to go out and order the external floppy drive, is to remove the hard drive from this computer, plug it into another PC, probably the 98 PC, and install Windows 95 on that computer to the hard drive and then once it's installed put it back into the laptop so that's exactly what we're going to be doing right now in today's video first thing we're going to do is remove the uh port replicator on the back here so i'm going to unscrew these knobs here and that is going to come right out like so and we'll set that aside and we'll flip this machine over and actually i was looking at this machine last night when i finished recording the video and i was able to get it to power on without you can see it's not plugged in right now and it actually holds a charge so the battery in this thing still works though i don't know how uh, much of a charge that it can hold but it is able to uh to be powered by the battery which is pretty cool so we're going to force power off here you see this is that screen that i was talking about so we're going to shut it off flip it over and because the battery actually holds a charge and this is just you know good practice regardless we're going to remove the battery from the system we're going to remove uh all of the screws on the back here so i've got my trusty ifixit uh driver kit here this is the large one that they sell i believe these are just phillips screws so we'll connect that there and let's see yep those are coming right out <laughs> So this longer one is for the, the outer casing here. So we're gonna set those aside and this one I'm gonna set in a separate uh, pile here so I don't confuse it with the other ones. There's no screw here. There's no screw over there. I believe there is a screw right here. And yeah, I can see it is starting to come apart. Actually, I wonder if you open it up because you see this is starting to come off right here. Yeah, that's the hard drive right there. That is absolutely the hard drive. Now the question is, does it come off? It doesn't want to just lift up. Oh, it's underneath the keyboard a little bit. All right, so it looks like to be able to get this piece out, we're gonna have to move the keyboard because the keyboard is on top of this latch here and it's preventing the piece from being removed completely. Now the keyboard, you can see as I'm kind of pulling it down there, it can definitely move down, but for it to move down, we need to remove these two plastic pieces. It's not really coming up at all. So I wonder if there is a, a screw that I've missed somewhere. Oh, wait a second, there is. Oh, that is really stupid. There's a screw hole right here. Although I wonder if that's for, because we don't need to remove the entire case. I don't want to remove the entire case and I don't really want to mess with this sticker here. This is just like a warranty thing. If you're not familiar with this, it's very easy for manufacturers to hide screws underneath like a sticker. And then if, you know, it gets punctured in some way or if the sticker gets lifted up, uh, that means that, you know, someone's tampered with it and, uh, you know, then your, then your warranty's voided. But yeah, there is definitely a screw 
right there you can see as I'm moving my finger over it. All right, so I was able to get this piece out uh, with a little bit of finagling, but here it is. This is likely the date of manufacture, April 23rd, 1999. Okay, but yeah, this is the hard drive right here and you've got this gooey material around it, which is the uh, support that it was talking about in the manual or in that pamphlet. You know, this is a way to support the hard drive. We have to get the keyboard out to get the hard drive out. All right, so one thing I've noticed is if you see, you're gonna have to look really close, but inside of the keyboard here, you see those two little notches there that are kind of extending from the side panel? Yeah, those are preventing the keyboard from lifting up. So let's try to remove these screws on the side here. I think we got it, maybe. There we go. See that there? This is starting to separate here. Oh yeah, check this out. Okay, we made progress. I was able to finagle the keyboard and get it to lift up so because i was i was removing like the entire <laughs> like we're basically gonna separate this piece here from this piece which was connected to the screen here and i was lifting it up and there were a lot of cables that were you know connected between the two pieces like the display cable for example and it was pretty difficult to uh move those around but it turns out we don't have to do that because the keyboard just lifts up right like this and we get access to the inside of the computer so now we can focus our attention on the hard drive area right down here all right hang on a second you see something wrong with this picture here so so this right here, this orange cable, is the cable for the hard drive. It runs, and this is it right here, and it's not plugged into anything. We're going to try just to plug this back in. Well, everyone, I've got some great news. The hard drive is spinning up. I didn't notice it before, but the hard drive wasn't spinning up before. Now it's spinning up. It was literally disconnected. And in fact, look, I turn the machine on and we get a 162 code configuration change has occurred because it now detects a hard drive. So if we exit, starting Windows 95, and of course the camera has to go out of focus right then and there. So somehow the hard drive got disconnected from the motherboard. Now, I don't know if this happened like during shipping or if you know, it had been disconnected like the last time somebody opened this thing up and it's just been powered off since then. This is it, guys. I mean, that was, wow, I can't believe it was that simple. We didn't even have to install, you know, like reinstall Windows 95. So it looks like we've got uh, Midtown Madness 2 and we've got like the single click mode on to where when you hover over something it automatically highlights and you click it again and it opens. So we just opened up Midtown Madness 2. Oh, it can't locate the CD-ROM, though it doesn't show us the error message. Now, if you're curious about the layout of the uh, trackball and these mouse uh, buttons here, this top one is left click and this bottom one is right click. You can see the context menus opening up there. So yeah, if you were curious how that was laid out, there you go. All right, so let's do what I was gonna do in the original video and explore this thing a little bit. So let's right click on my computer and go to properties here. And uh, so yeah, Windows 95 uh, with IE 4.0, I believe this is OSR2, uh, Windows 95 OSR2. And there is a uh, name and organization here, I'm just gonna have to blur that out just in case, you know, that identifies anybody. And yeah, manufacturing supported by Panasonic. Oh, here's the battery meter. It says it is 25%, because yeah, this is not plugged into the wall right now, this is running off the battery. So it's, it claims to have 25% of total battery power remaining, but it's still pretty amazing that it holds a charge after all these years. I do not like this, uh, like when you hover over something, it just selects it classic style. There we go. So we're gonna just go back to classic. And there we go. So now we've got, you know, standard double clicking to open up stuff. So. so yeah, that's, uh, that's what the speaker sounds like. Let's play the exit windows sound. Oof. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it is quite loud. Let me see if we can turn it down here. Oh yeah, that sounds much better. It was just way too loud to the point where it was like peaking and it just sounded terrible. But uh, yeah, I just had to turn it down there. But yeah, like I said, I'm I'm pretty amazed that this thing is uh, is is running off of battery power. 
but let's see what programs we got on here. Let's go to add slash remove program. So we got Microsoft chat. It looks like a ton of Microsoft stuff. Chat, Front Page Express, IE4, Midtown Madness 2. Oh, that's a Microsoft game. Music Control, Net Meeting, Office 97, Outlook Express, Wallet, Web Publishing Wizard, Palm Desktop. That's on the desktop here. So this was likely used with a Palm PDA. Panasonic Power Management, Real Player. Gosh, that's a blast from the past. TT Win 95. Uh, not sure what that is. We'll check that out in a moment. USB supplement to OSR2. So this is OSR2. There you go. Video live player. And yeah, that's it. So let's open up the start menu here. Go to programs. And let's check out this. Uh, what was this? Oh, I wonder if that if that has to do with touchscreen. What, what was it called? TT Win 95. Yeah, TT Win 95. There you go. So let's see. So you can use your finger. Uh, to you know move the mouse around but you know the problem is if you want to get more like precise uh, Touches here like closing out. I mean I was able to do it there, but you see here. It's you know Not the easiest thing to do so you could use a stylus. So I got my 3ds stylus here and Yeah, so there you go So you can use that if you want if you want to get more you know, precise clicks. So here's Palm Desktop. So let's say it thinks the date is January 2nd, 1999. Uh, we can go in here and change that if we want to. 2021. It's not 11.42 p.m. though. It's like four in the afternoon, I think, but whatever. Yeah, there you go. Here's Microsoft Photo Editor. I think I opened this by mistake. I don't know what this is. For some reason, I want to think Need for Speed 2, because it's NFS 2. I'm curious as to what this is. So let's right click. Go to properties. So it's in CNFS2 SE. I really think this could be Need for Speed 2. Need for Speed 2 second edition, perhaps? That's exactly what that is. That's Need for Speed 2. I wonder if this needs a CD. Now, I'm pretty certain I've played this version of Need for Speed before, but it's been so long. Actually, yes, I have. This, I remember this. Oh, look at that frame. <laughs> Right. Oh my gosh, that's glorious. Oh my gosh, I remember this. I used to play this like all the time. All right, before we move on with this, I want to uh, secure the laptop back together and get all the screws put back in. So that's what I'm doing right now. I just got this nice time lapse going on for you. All right, so we're back. We've got the laptop properly reassembled and we're going to launch Need for Speed 2 again. And uh, gosh, it has been a long time. Oh yeah, oh, I've also got it plugged into the wall, by the way. So we're not running off of battery power. Let's go to location. Oh man, I remember this. Yeah, I feel like there's supposed to be music playing on the menu right now, but okay, one player, tournament. Okay, done, and we're gonna go player one. Let's choose, gosh, what car do we want? Go with a Ferrari and we'll go red and let's race. Man, it has, gosh, it's been so long since I've, oh, I remember that loading screen. Oh gosh. <laughs> Yeah, so hang on a second. Hang on just a second here. All right, so we're trying out a new audio setup that I've got. You guys are hearing sound directly from the laptop right now. We're gonna restart this race though, because I've completely uh, screwed up. Two, one, go. All right, here we go, guys. Check it out. Yeah, there's like, there's supposed to be music. And even though, like, I mean, you guys saw, I had the music enabled on the menu, it still is not playing. I know I have it enabled on the menu, I don't know why it's not playing the music. And yeah, I was in, like, you go to game setup. There's no option to, like, turn off, you know, the music here. And you go down to options, and I think that brings up the same... Yes, okay, well, it is a little different here, we got more options. Racing music. I wonder if this if the audio file got replaced or something because I feel like it's supposed to be playing music right now. I don't know, but whatever. I mean, the game works. Opponents, here we go. Yeah, full grid. Okay, we'll do the McLaren and we're racing. We're in what a Ford GT. Yeah. Okay, this will be great. Yeah, we're still going to not have music, but whatever. Three, two, one, go. All right. Let's race, guys.
Well, hey, it was a lot better than what we started at for the first couple laps. But there you go. That's Need for Speed on the on the Panasonic Toughbook, the miniature Toughbook CFM33. And oh, I was saving screenshots the whole time. I was like, what on earth was pressing? I think it was tab or caps. I think it was tab and it was saving screenshots. So we can open up one of these here and there we go. Oh yeah, that's an awesome screenshot, isn't it? But yeah, guys, I mean, aside from those additional programs that uh, that touchscreen configuration tool uh, in here, and then you've obviously got, oh, there's a Panasonic portable CD-ROM player. I guess this thing had a external CD-ROM connected to it at some point. It's pretty awesome we were able to get this thing to boot into Windows, and it's amazing that it was as simple as, I mean, like I said, I thought we are going to have to take the hard drive out and reinstall Windows on it in another computer, but all we had to do was plug the drive back in because, like you saw, somehow that cable got disconnected at some point, whether in shipping or long before Alex uh, sent this thing out to me. But there you have it, guys. The Panasonic Toughbook CFM33 is up and running. Windows 95 and uh, it's pretty awesome to say the least so guys if you enjoyed this episode if you want to see more like it be sure to give it a thumbs up be sure to get subscribed down below and turn on those channel notifications if you haven't already to get notified whenever I upload a new video which I do multiple times every single week on this channel and as always I want to thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video